Hello, beautiful ladies. My name is Mari. I am at the Ebor campus and I serve with the beautiful team there. And I'm so excited to be here today to talk about generosity. So generosity is the act of being generous. Um, being generous means being a liberal giver, ample giver, a lot. So today, um, we're going to tackle the question of what if I don't have enough? Because I know a lot of you think that, hey, I would love to be generous, but I don't have enough to be generous with. Well, let's talk about that. So I'm going to share um, a family vacation that we went on. And uh, we went to the mountains. And while we were there, my husband and dad decided to go find um, a lake or something to go fishing in. So they found this park that had a really nice lake, kind of really kind of secluded, perfect for having just some quiet time. While they were there, they met a family that they talked with. Um, the dad showed them little tricks on how to fish in the lake. And they were all excited. They had a good conversation. They came back to the cabin. They told us about it. And so we said, hey, yeah, let's, let's go to the park. We all wanted to go. So as we get to the park, the family is there. They're all happy greeting us. They were such a blessing. They were Christians, and they were, they were just excited. We had great conversation about the Lord and just conversations about the town that we were in in general. Um, it, was, it was wonderful. But then they tell us that they're homeless and actually living there in the park. And we were shocked because they didn't look homeless. They had smiles on their faces. They were, I mean... Nothing about them showed that they were homeless. Matter of fact, the fact that they were just talking about the Lord with so much joy, you couldn't even see the sadness in them. And so as we began to talk more about that, we talked for hours. We, we cried together. We talked together. We laughed together. And they just kept encouraging us to the point where they invited us over to their tent to have food with them. And they didn't have a lot of food. They didn't have a lot of stuff. But they invited us over there to partake in, in what they did have. And they were hopeful and, and just so much joy that they encouraged us to, in a, to a point to where when we went back to our cabins, we washed up all our clothes, everything we had, and we got it together. Um, and we took this stuff to them because they didn't have anything. I'm not sure. It's been so long ago. I'm not sure if it was a fire, but I know whatever it was, they didn't have hardly anything. And so they were so overjoyed when we brought them the stuff. They didn't ask us for a thing. Matter of fact, the fact that they offered us what they had when they had nothing was just an awesome testimony that stuck with me in my walk with Christ today. So in, in, in hearing that, I just want to go into our, our, our key scripture for today. Um, and just talk about some different ways that we can be generous when we think we don't have enough to offer to the Lord. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 11, it says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. The righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies the seed to the sower and the bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. Through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Now that is God's word. He is saying, the more you give, he's saying, the more I'm going to give. You're not going to run out. So there's nothing that you can do. There's nothing that you can give that God won't replace. So in, 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 in hearing that, I know some people are still kind of reluctant and saying, but I don't think I have enough. Well, you do, honey. So let's go to 
ways that we can be generous. Number one, we have to learn to be grateful. That family was so grateful for everything that they had. They were grateful that their family was together. They were happy. Yes, they wanted a home. Yes, they wanted a job. Yes, they wanted all these things, but they still understood what was the most important thing in having family togetherness and really having God in their lives. And although they didn't have a home, they had a place to stay. They were grateful. They had food to eat. They were grateful. And they weren't naked when we saw them. They had clothes on their back and shoes on their feet. They were grateful. The first thing God wants us to do is just be be grateful for the things that we do have. Be grateful for the, the little bit that we do have. When we're focusing on the good things of God, the good things, uh, the happy things, we're less focused on ourself and, and what we don't have. So also, number two, give of our possessions and money. And I know a lot of times we hear that in church, you know, oh, we want money. That's not what it's all about. God is saying, be a cheerful giver in all the things that we give, including our possessions and our money. In, in uh, Luke 3 and 11, it says, if you have two coats, give one to someone who doesn't have any. So share. If you have food, share your food as well. There was, in, uh, um, in Mark 12, um, there was a point where Jesus was sitting in the temple, and he was watching people give into the offering box. And um, people who had plenty, they were given in there. But what really caught Jesus' attention was the widow woman who had nothing except for two copper coins. And when I think of copper coins, one version of the Bible says copper coins, another one says coins, but it was two coins. I think of pennies. She had two copper coins. The copper coins, I know it's pennies. And she put that in the offering. And Jesus said she gave all that she had. That was a big blessing. So when we go back to our original key scripture, she reaped abundantly. She, will, she, she sowed abundantly. She will reap abundantly because that gift is big. To her, it was everything. Sometimes we think, oh, because we don't have this, I'm not, or I need to hold on to that $20 because I, I might need this instead of trusting in God. God wants us to get, put our trust fully in him when we give. He's going to replace everything that we do. Um, in, in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, it says, If we give to others, you will be given that full amount in return. It will be packed down, shaken together, spilling onto your lap. The way you treat others is the way you will be treated. So you can sit there and complain, or you can say, you know what? I'm going to give everything that I got to God, including I may not even have the coins, but I'm going to give a gift. I'm going to give a gift of my time. I'm going to give a gift. I might be talented. Maybe there's a talent. In. Maybe I can't sing like somebody else or, or speak like somebody else. It doesn't matter. God didn't require us to do those things. What he did require us to do is to give. And as we give, we, we will see the abundant, we will reap abundantly because his word tells us we will. Next one, of course, be generous with your gifts and talents. We make a lot of excuses why we won't open our mouths sometimes because we're watching somebody else and we like the way they speak, we like what they're saying, we like how they sing. I I'm not good enough, so I'm just gonna retreat back. Well, you know, in the Bible, um, Matthew 25, um, there was somebody who retreated back, but uh, it didn't work out too well for them. So there was this, uh, Jesus tells a story of the master who had servants and he was going away out of town and leaving his servants responsible for things. One was responsible for 5,000 talents or coins, another responsible for 2,000, and another responsible for one. Well, when he came back, the one who had the 5,000, he doubled it. He was like, oh, okay, I doubled it for you. He said, oh, because you did that, I'm going to give you more. The second one did the same thing. Because you did that, I'm going to give you more. The third one, he was reluctant to, to uh, do anything with it because he knows that 
you know, God, you, I didn't want to mess your stuff up. I didn't want to, I see they had more. I was watching them and, and uh, I didn't think that I could do the same thing. Well, in, in, in verse 26 of 25, now this is the words in the, the contemporary English version. I know some of you are going to think I'm paraphrasing, <laughs> but um, it says, you are lazy and good for nothing. You know I harvest what I don't plant and gather crops where I haven't get scattered seed. You could have at least put the money in the bank so you could have earned interest. And that's kind of harsh, but the point is that God gives us gifts. We may not all get the same measure of gifts, but he gives us gifts, and he intends for us to use them and, and multiply those gifts that he has given us. So he ends up taking away what he gave him and giving it to somebody else, one of the other, other ones who, who, who doubled their talents. I'm saying that to say this. It doesn't matter. If God only gave you a little, don't complain about what somebody else has. What you have is enough, and what you have, God will replenish because his word tells us he will. So as we go on, be generous with your time. And that's kind of a tricky one because we live in a world of, it's full of busyness and, and um, we feels like we never have enough time. We got kids, we gotta go here, we gotta do this, we gotta go see this. And a lot of times we say we don't have the time. And so what we're lacking is that intimate time to know what God wants us to do. So Jesus in Mark 1 and 35, very early the next morning before daylight, Jesus got up and went to a place where he could be alone and pray. This is important in our walk with Christ. Sometimes we gotta take time, and especially the first of our time, take time away and be with the Lord, pray. Let him speak to us. Get to know him more. Get in the word more. Because the word will bring life into your walk with Christ. And as he was doing that, then one of the disciples came and said, hey, everybody's looking for you. And he was like, you know what? We need to go to this other place because I have work to do. That's what I came here for. We got to remember that our walk with Christ is purposeful. And we have purposeful work to do. And, and while we're doing this work, sometimes we may have to say no. Sometimes we say yes. Sometimes we say yes to things that we don't necessarily want to do, but we, have to, we say yes because this is what God requires us to do. And he replenishes our time. I know when I, am, um, when I get up early and I have my time with the Lord, it just makes such a difference in the day. And I realized that that's the key. That's the missing piece on, during all the busyness, the missing piece is to remember who you work for and who our God is. And, and we work for God, he's our God, he's our life source. Once we start our day with him, then you become more generous. You become led by him. You, God leads you on what to give and when to give it. So, in, in saying this, there's many benefits of being generous. Happiness, more joy. Um, people who are very generous are usually happier people. They're usually satisfied in, in what they see and what they do. Uh, more positive attitude. Um, it's so nice when you, you hear people who have the joy of the Lord, like, like the family that we met um, in Georgia. They had the joy, and, and it, the light that shined around them, it was so powerful, it just penetrated my heart even more. You build stronger relationships. When, you, when you're generous, when you're generous with your time, with your efforts, sometimes people just need an, a, a listening ear. And when we give them that time to listen, it just makes a difference in their life, and in turn, it makes a difference in your life. And back to the beginning, the scripture, we will reap what we sow. So in conclusion, uh, to being generous and, and, and uh, what if I don't have enough? Oh, you have enough. You have enough. 
you can use your time more wisely. We can um, give away our possessions more and use our gifts and talents. Even if your gift or talent is to just give a word of encouragement. Maybe it, your gift is not to stand up in front of everybody. But you can certainly say something to your sister to the left of you, to the right of you, in front of you. You can give a word of encouragement. You don't even understand how far a word of encouragement can go in somebody's life. So in conclusion to that, you have enough. You have enough, and God's word will show you exactly how to, to do this. And if you want to be happier, be more generous. You want a more positive outlook in life? Be more generous. You want to be healthier because you're happier? Be more generous. So in conclusion, I just want to pray with you, and I just pray that you have a wonderful table talk and wonderful discussion. And from this point on, I, I, I pray that you will not be afraid or hesitant to use your God-given gift of being generous because he doesn't look at what it is. He looks at the heart of what you're doing. So it doesn't matter how big or small, just do it. Lord, you just be with us today, Lord God. Just touch each and every heart, Lord God, to just be as, as generous as you call them to be. It's not all about money, but sometimes it's just about giving and walking in the Lord. And Lord, I just pray that you touch the, the table talks today, that the ladies may open up and, and um, share their gifts and share their gifts of encouragement and, and positivity throughout the table. And we just give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen.